maths. You're doing maths, and so maths must be true. And then in English, he says, you know, it must be true because everyone's speaking English. But, well, I mean, that's not really what uh, what an English class is at school. But also, like, what what language are they speaking in maths, Matt? <laughs> it's not just your English class they were speaking English in, mate. Today in English class, we'll be proving the existence of English, and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, QED. Oh, damn it, that's Latin. Oh, we've, got, we've, we've, we've straight off, off this curriculum. <laughs> Math, the gateway drug to biology. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because this is the internet and that's how it works. Now, I'm your host, No Illusions. He will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles from my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm Matt Powell Fantastic. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's a new level Matt Powell, of Matt Powell, Matt Powell. <laughs> oh, and of course, and also joining us tonight is Matt Powell Virgin, project director of the Good Thinking Society, host of Be Reasonable, co-host of Skeptics with a K, the editor of the Skeptic UK, and still Eli number one fake website fetish recipient Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Hey, thanks for having me back on, guys. I think Matt Powell Virgin is, is the entirety of his Wikipedia page. I think that's all it says is Matt Powell Virgin. Section. I just looked him up in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, okay, so <laughs> tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, so we watched The Atheist Religion. It's the hour-long documentary in which Matt Powell, the Jared Kushner of being wrong about evolution, <laughs> destroys Darwinism with monkey sailors, I think basically <laughs> is the entirety of his monkey argument. Surfers? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love making documentaries based on not understanding the underside of a Snapple cap, but <laughs> your mom says you can't do it indoors anymore yeah. because of that time Aaron Ra upper decked your toilet, <laughs> you will love this movie. So, oh, God, look, I, I just want to point out, first of all, that we could have done an entire fucking episode on the comments. <laughs> okay, I, I would have enjoyed myself so much more if instead of watching the movie, I had just scrolled through all 1,158 comments. Okay, because because they break down as follows, right? 35% or so are young earth creationists thanking him for his ministry. 35% or so are atheists who randomly happened upon this shit and are making fun of him. And 30% or so are gam listeners who deliberately happened upon this shit and are making fun of them. And it's a proud <laughs> fucking legacy. If I die tomorrow, <laughs> I've done my part. <laughs> oh, poor Matt. We're going to we're going to outrank him on YouTube when this episode goes up again. Uh, isn't it? Sorry, Matt. OK, so is there anything sorry. you just want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, yeah. I want to say best, worst use of the fossil record. Mostly because some of the arguments they make in this movie are so old, they've fossilized over time. <laughs> right? That's how old and dead these arguments are. And they just keep digging them up and bringing them back out again. Yeah, boy, they so got nothing. All right. Speaking of which, I was actually going to go with best worst clam based arguments. <laughs> I just I'm putting a pin in the clams right now because I had so God, I was literally on the floor. I didn't trust myself to sit in a chair after the clam <laughs> argument argument, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I have so many. My make-a-wish at this point is follow-up questions about the class <laughs> of this movie. And of course, I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst dinner table full of experts. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who heard our first Matt Powell review, Science Falsely So-Called, he had Steven Anderson as an expert. Mm -hmm. When I say that the bar managed to be lowered for this movie, <laughs> I'm talking hard hitters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we'll, we'll spend some time with them. All right. So I'll tell you what. I am exhausted at the mere thought of revisiting this nonsense. So we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to dive into all the I know you are. But what am I that is the atheist religion? In the wasted, sounds very more like Northingham. <laughs> Hilarious, brilliant. Hey, Marsh. Oh, hey, no, I'm sorry. Let me turn this off a, a, a real second here. No, thank so I'm. What's with the uh, old timey Victrola, dude? Oh, this, you know, I'm just like sitting back and relaxing. Yeah, the Queen gives everyone one with uh, an instructional wax cylinder on their 11th birthday. Really? 
Yeah, I mean, unless you marry a grandson, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So, okay, Marsh, but if you're looking for a premium listening experience, why don't you just try Raycon wireless earbuds? What are Raycon wireless earbuds? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, no. Uh, well, whether you're catching up on your favorite news podcast, binging on an audiobook, or powering through your workout with a pumped up playlist, a pair of Raycons in your ears can make all the difference. No dangling wires or stems to get in your way here. Raycons comes in a range of stylish color ways, but always with a comfortable in-ear fit for a more discreet look. Oh, that does sound good. They are. In fact, they're so good that when Raycon sent us a pair to try, me and Eli's wives stole them from us. Well, that's high praise indeed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, well, not as much as the fact that I went ahead and bought another pair. And that's because Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat resistant construction and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly. And with enough battery life for six hours of playtime, you can unplug for a while. The best part, Raycon makes great sound accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. Wow, that is a great deal. So like, where do I get a pair? Well, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for our listeners, and here's what you got to do to get it. You go to buyraycon.com slash gam. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair for yourself and a spare in case somebody, you know, reappropriates the first pair. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash gam. Buyraycon.com slash gam. No, oh, thanks, Noah. Now, if you don't mind, I'll go back to my program now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And remember, don't let your grandchild be an octoroon. There it is. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Thanks for coming to the planning meeting for my next big t movie. Th this is where you guys are supposed to clap. Applause is for the devil. Okay. Well, as I said, the basis for this movie is going to be, I, I don't get it. Therefore, it isn't real. So uh, why don't we go around and talk about what we don't understand, huh? Okay, um, well, I, for one, uh, I don't understand. Uh... Uh, actually, Marsh, we had several requests for you to do your southern accent again. Did you? Very much so. Yeah, the, the people need more. Uh, all right, then, yeah, sure. Well, I, for one, don't understand why the channel on the TV matters when I'm trying to use the VCR. That's a good point right there. Here, here. Also, how the hell does the coupon expire? I mean, I understand that a business only runs a sale for a limited time, but, but if I bring in the coupon, that should be valid. That's a good one. John Borton, put that in the movie. Uh, no, guys, I mean, it, it has to be stuff about science that we don't understand, not just, like, the world and stuff. Oh, okay. Why didn't you just say so? Okay, so um, what don't we understand about science that we could make this movie about? Oh. Uh... Everything? Pretty much everything, yeah. All right. Well, then let's move this kitchen table out to my mom's backyard and we can get started. Yeehaw! And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on the DVD cover art because damned if he was going to Photoshop all of that shit and not get it into his YouTube release. And um, I feel like we could have done an episode on just the DVD cover <laughs> art if we really wanted to. <laughs> right? It's... It is monkeys praying to Richard Dawkins, who is dressed like a Jedi while a TIE fighter attacks a T-Rex in the background. And it is definitely the coolest part of the movie. <laughs> and the most realistic. <laughs> yeah, why is there a TIE fighter? Why is there a TIE fighter? Why is <laughs> Dawkins dressed as a Jedi? I, I get the point that they're making, you know, that universal truth that all atheists worship Dawkins as an unerring source of truth and not to be ever questioned. I get that. Bit, <laughs> why the TIE fighter stuff? Yeah. Why is the TIE fighter attacking the TIE fighter? Why are they on different sides i feel like they would be <laughs> friends I, I i no fucking idea what i found to be most unrealistic on the cover though was at the bottom where it says from the makers of science falsely so called them like makers matt plural <laughs> really there were multiple <laughs> okay come, give me a fucking break all right and then it comes up to tell us that it's available on youtube yeah yeah <laughs> Who the fuck is that for? I'm watching it on YouTube, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says success like proudly stating that your movie is now available on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the high bar of movie, of moving picture. The only purpose that can serve is to make fun of someone who bought this as a DVD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we then we open up on actually the same Richard Dawkins quotes that we just read in the David Icke book <laughs> paraphrasing here either you believe in evolution or you're a fucking idiot <laughs> yeah this, this quote is great if you meet an evolution denier Dawkins says they're either ignorant stupid or insane 
Now let's meet a couple of them. In this <laughs> <laughs> let's spend an hour backing that quote up. <laughs> But I love, so, like, yeah, so we get this little montage of atheists saying very, very nasty things about creationism. And, like, uh, the sources for our shit is, like, CNN, right? He shows a clip from Larry King interviewing Bill Nye, whatever. His side in his own goddamn movie gets represented by a quote from World Net Daily. <laughs> According to reliable and very good news network World Net Daily, <laughs> atheists are coming for your babies. It's even worse. The thing on World Net Daily, the article he's referencing, was written by Chuck Norris. I found oh, it. It's a Christ. Chuck Norris article. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you believe, CNN or Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris. The Chuck um, Norris network, actually. The whole the argument thing. that they're making as well is that atheists are evil because they're putting stuff on the internet that, that they're trying to persuade people with. Mm -hmm. Says this movie that Matt Powell put on the internet to try and persuade people with. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, so then Matt Powell shows up. You know, we're still getting the credits and everything, but Matt Powell shows up. His first appearance on screen is totally poning Charles Darwin. All right. <laughs> he, so first of all, he puts up a quote and he reads a quote. The quote that he puts up on screen is wrong. He reads the correct quote, but, the, but the, they're not the same thing. And the quote is Darwin saying, you know, I wonder sometimes if I haven't been devoting my entire life to something that was wrong, right? Mm. This comes from a letter that I, I just want to point this out. This comes from a letter that Darwin sent to a Scottish geologist, uh, Charles Lyell. And the very next sentence in the letter is essentially, good thing I don't have to worry about that since you guys just proved me right. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this is the next qu sentence. Quote, now, he says, you know, I, I sometimes wondered if I was maybe wrong about this whole thing. He says, quote, now I look at it as morally impossible that investigators of truth like you and Hooker, here, here he's referring to work in geology that proves the Earth's antiquity, can be wholly wrong, and therefore I feel that I may rest in peace. End quote. <laughs> and we even without that context, Matt's point here is Charles Darwin had doubts. I have never had doubts. So you should listen <laughs> to me, Matt Powell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Not, not only is the point shit made, but it's also a shit point. <laughs> I just I also love how he talks about Charles Darwin. He actually says Charles Darwin, who everyone is suddenly a fan of in 2020. It's like, yeah, yeah everyone became a massive fan of Charles Darwin in 2020. Darwinism was just one of those things we all got into during the first lockdown. It was sourdough, <laughs> Tiger King and the theory of evolution by natural selection. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that's when, that's when you guys put him on your money, right? You put him on your money in 2020. <laughs> and I, I'd never seen Matt Powell before either. So the first time I see him, I was like, have I seen this guy before? Oh, yeah, he's the guy who came up to my table in that bar just to do a magic trick real quick. That's, that's <laughs> How dare you? How dare you <laughs> insult my proud profession? Oh, you're getting a website made about you for that, man. So, And then we, of course, we go to the place any good documentary about evolution should start, the Columbine Massacre. Mmm... You see, when they were explaining why they did it, they mentioned the word evolution. Ergo, this is all evolution's fault. Oh, see, I, I missed that because he appears to be interviewing the head accountant for all the totes in this <laughs> section. <laughs> why? Why did this person agree to be on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but right. But he's telling us it's all because those kids learned about evolution. Yeah, yeah. And that's because in the in one of their letters, they reference natural selection and therefore the Columbine massacres were the fault of evolution. But the same court uh, that mentioned natural selection also referenced World War II and Vietnam. So you could equally say the shooting happened because they were taught history at school. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, 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 the fucking quote also mentioned God. He said he was evolving into a God. So maybe it's because they taught him religion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. It's a, good, it's a good thing that there are no cases of religion causing people to think that they're superior to other people and then justifying their mistreatment, or this argument sure would backfire on them. But <laughs> ugly. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, if we are playing the what do high school massacres have in common, I mean, can I play too? Because I can find a lot of other things that are very, very <laughs> clearly in common amongst all the high school massacres. So, yes. And then he throws out one of his favorite bullshit quotes. Matt Powell says this all the time. He says that 97% of school shootings are carried out by atheists. What? 
What I love about this is I tried to Google the source of that. And the only thing I could find was Matt Powell making this claim in May 2020. But at the time then, his claim was 99% of, of shootings were carried out by atheists. Oh, really? So logically, according to Powell, theists shot up a lot of schools in 2020 <laughs> to bring that number down. <laughs> they knocked it away down. That's his own math. Yeah, I just, I, I, I read that and I just, I wrote my notes, 117% of all rapes are carried out by Matt Powell. You're a move, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he follows it up with an even dumber yes. claim. He says, Christians have never committed such an act. First of all, committed such an act. What script is he reading that off of? Second of all, he literally might as well say Christians can fly. <laughs> right. It never. So I'd point out the fucking Middle Ages, but I feel like the guy who thinks that pterosaurs fought in the Civil War might just get confused by yep. that. So maybe yep. not. He also points out that atheists lead the world in alcoholism and that is only because we have Heath on our side. That's right, not fair. Yes. You got to do the median, not the average, Matt Powell. <laughs> he says, atheists drink and do drugs where I'm like, you guys rape and murder more. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if you're right, but we'd still win. It was curious he didn't mention like covering up for pedophilia in that list of bad right, things yeah, that right. people do. It's so funny, funny how you missed that one out, Matt. Weird. And he closes this section with, in memory of Rachel Joy Scott. Oh, Jesus. Yes, 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 uh -huh. I'm just going to say, he is a pioneer. One of those mid-movie in memoriams. That you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, in case anybody's not familiar with her story. Oh, that's apparently the girl who was asked if she was a Christian and she said yes. And that's why they killed her in Columbine. And that story is not true. Not at all. Not remotely. Yeah, in memory of that dead girl we keep lying about. That's <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. In memory of something that didn't happen. Yeah, boy, how Christian is that of you? <laughs> all right. So then we get to part one of The Atheist Religion, which is titled <laughs> The Atheist Religion. It's a self-titled mm -hmm. album, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, so up until now, we've been watching the pre-movie. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And this is where we meet, in my opinion, the star of the show, Dr. Raw Matt. Mm. Hey, man, you don't have to use your gay wrestling porn name now that you're a <laughs> Christian anymore. You can, you can go back to being named whatever it is you were. Yeah, for that. <laughs> Dr. Raw Matt is uh, he's labeled as a creation scientist. And he says the biggest problem with atheists is that they're not curious people. They don't ask questions. Well, the funny thing is, I am a curious person. I do have questions like, is your name really raw? And what are you a doctor of? And uh, if you Google him, you find the answer to that. He is a doctor of divinity studies huh. specifically. Mm. But if you Google him, you also find out he's apparently a professional athlete and a master herbalist who claims <laughs> to have a special way of curing Lyme disease. That is their really? creation expert. Mm. I feel I like one Eli set up that website. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, okay, I'm gonna, I gotta be fair because like he come up and he's like, you know, atheists aren't really looking for answers and I was about to argue and I'm like, fuck, I am watching a Matt Powell movie. I am not in a fucking place to argue with you right now. And is it me? Is Dr. Raw Matt being interviewed from prison here? Because whatever he's in, it's it's a very sort of sparse, white, sort of tiled background wall. I'm pretty sure he's in prison as they're interviewing him. <laughs> so, yeah. And then he points out that if we didn't actually believe in creationism, we wouldn't care enough to fight against it. He says in the movie about how atheism isn't... <laughs> Real. Yeah, yeah. And he also says about how uh, the atheists, they're so wound up by religion, which means it must be true, says a guy who's really, really visibly wound up by atheism, like right. shaking yeah, on the spot exactly. with anger at, at the idea of atheism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we cut real quick to a, a little bit more video of R and Ra. I had to write my notes at this point, man. Like this, his obsession with Aaron Ra would be disturbing if he was Aaron Ra's puppy, right? <laughs> but do you notice they label Aaron Ra as just Aaron Ra, all one word? There's not right. that yes. his name is Aaron Ra. Is that how they pronounce it as well? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, and we also this is the first time we get that clip of Matt talking to his audience. Well, talking that space where he would like there to be an audience. <laughs> There are so few people in this room. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. My notes keep coming back to that about how this room is. He's talking to literally tens of people, as many as tens of people. I, I think you're exaggerating it, man. <laughs> I do not think we achieve tens in that room. <laughs> he has to fill the seats with multiple children. Like, yeah. there are multiple children taking up multiple seats each to make the room fill full. <laughs> 
It's so sad. And so he's and he's trying to like he keeps trying to get him to like react in some way to, to what he's saying, but they keep not reacting. At one point he gets so desperate that he goes, This is so silly. They hold up signs and stuff. Like no alpha male would ever do that. <laughs> well, okay. It is now my life's mission to get the picture that I know with a certainty is out there of Matt Powell holding up a sign. I oh, know there's a picture. 100%. Because <laughs> his whole point is how ridiculous it is that atheists are out there on the street talking to people. And it's like, Matt, guy, look at your team. You, you're, <laughs> you're pissing off a lot of your own team here, man. <laughs> All right. So, and then because Matt hasn't realized that being like a religion is bad is not a great argument for him. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about atheist church, right? They talk about they 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 speak or well, actually they, they don't speak. They get some guardian footage of a Sunday assembly organizer. They they get the front of the building where it's like this is an atheist church, and then the organizer going, "Yeah, we get together." <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to be honest, this is one of the reasons I think Sunday Assembly being like the atheist church, I think that's kind of a bit bullshit. And this is part of the reason. It's just ammunition for dickheads like this to take out of context. That's one of the reasons. The other reason would be something I think Andrew would have to remove if I was to say the other reason I think it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, and then we cut back to Raw. Jesus Christ, this guy. So I, I have him down in my notes, by the way, is Raw Meth. It's raw mad, but you know, it's, I feel like it's interchangeable. Very fair. And he goes, he said, this is such an amazing line. He says, and I quote, atheism is a tiny little group of people. It's only five to 7% worldwide. <laughs> that is 530 million people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I'm not even sure. If, I think he's lowballing it there because that five to seven percent, that's not even true. That's barely even true of like India and Ireland are those places that aren't known for having massive atheist populations. No, no. Yeah, right, right. So, OK, China has, according to the latest survey that I could find, 800 million self-identified convinced <laughs> atheists. That's 61 percent of their population. And then like another 27 or something that are like, no, I'm not religious, man. That's silly. Yeah. yeah. So. This is also where he says, if the Bible is like Lord of the Rings, why don't you protest Lord of the Rings? And I wrote in my notes, I mean, if you and your buddy try to throw my wedding ring into a volcano because you read <laughs> Lord of the Rings, I would address it. <laughs> and then Raw throws out probably maybe the biggest doozy in the whole fucking movie, right? He says the whole thing about how atheists lead the world in all the worst possible categories that you could lead the world in. Here are the worst possible things. Depression, medication intake, suicide, and school shootings. Now, first of all, all his fucking lists are bullshit anyway, right? Like, we don't <laughs> lead the world in any of those. But, like, those are in raw meth's mind worse than rape, murder, child abuse, spousal abuse, assault, all things that Christians, of course, lead at least the American statistics. Like, medication intake is worse than murder in your mind, dude? He's just parked in a van outside of like a chemo clinic. Those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, you do get the feeling that he saw a list of bad things, picked out the ones that atheists are worst at, and then decided that those were the list of the worst possible yes. things. Like child abuse, <laughs> is it that bad? Nah, it's not that bad. We'll skip over that one. Yeah, so then Raw Meth takes a, a break from punching holes into drywall to talk about how atheists need to stop being so angry about it. <laughs> yes. Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! <laughs> he's so tense. He's so worked up as he's saying that atheists need to calm down. It's amazing. I literally paused the movie to take a drink of water while this gentleman screamed, calm down, and he's frothing at the mouth. I paused it <laughs> on yes. his literal froth. <laughs> I mean, I, I will give them something here because as they're talking about how shitty atheists are, they do cut to varied footage of atheists. And as they're talking about how shitty atheists are, cutting to a, a footage of Lawrence Krauss, it's like, yeah, fair, fair. You, okay, we'll yeah, that you know what? That's, that's, that's one for you. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Although I will say, if the point you're trying to make at that exact moment is how small a group atheists are, maybe don't cut to the fucking national mall filled with them. <laughs> <during> <laughs> <this> <laughs> rally. Not when you're preaching in front of half a dozen people. <laughs> yeah, right. My favorite part about the shot of Reason Rally is that he's showing these shots of atheism signs, but then some girl just has a Da Vinci umbrella. Like it's just an umbrella with Da Vinci drawings on it. 
but they don't know that that's not atheism. So they're like, <laughs> look at them fucking writing, <laughs> writing in words. Stuff that's probably an atheism oh, shit to me. Yeah, and then we learn that they've heard the non-stamp collector thing, right? They just didn't understand what they were hearing. Mm. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, they'll continue to repeat it without understanding it throughout this movie. Several different people will try and make an argument and still not understand it. This It's so fucking bizarre. So raw math takes the first crack at it. And he's like, you know, it wouldn't make sense if you didn't collect stamps. It wouldn't make sense to define yourself as a non-stamp collector unless, you know, you like fucking hated stamps. And OK, so I'm like, take me there. Raw, how, why would that, <laughs> why would it make it make more sense if you hated stamps? <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me want to know what he identifies as, right? Because you know that guy's like, I don't fucking zip line, no matter who you ask, no matter how <laughs> beautiful the scenery. You guys want a t shirt? <laughs> uh, all right. And then we, so we, Cut to part two, the Big Bang Theory. And I'm honestly impressed that he remembered he was doing parts, right? <laughs> Given what we've seen out of Matt Powell. But he does forget later. Yeah. He does stop doing parts. He starts listing things, but forgetting to do them as parts. Yeah, so he's been doing right, for a very short period of time. <laughs> yeah. And then he remembers again. It. It's it's pretty fucking nuts. But yeah, so he starts giving us this, um, you, you, you know he's going to totally nail the explanation of the Big Bang Theory. He gets every single number he said in his explanation wrong by not just orders of magnitude. This is literally true. He gets them wrong by several orders of magnitude of orders of magnitude. <laughs> Matt, if we're not going to believe in things that we don't understand, you don't need to limit yourself to stuff like the Big Bang. We could talk about revolving doors and jackboxes, <laughs> bud. <laughs> Start small. Speaking of starting small, I lo also love how he's talking to this audience and he's saying about how like, you know, everything in the universe was condensed and then you can tell that he's lost the audience so he has to add, so everything in this room was condensed into a door because <laughs> like, his audience lack object permanence for anything outside right. of the room while they're right. in there. <laughs> Yeah, so he says, and I, I just, I love his math here. He says that a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second after the Big Bang, that would be you know, 10 to the minus 27th, the universe was, he says, billions and billions of miles across. Uh, near as I can tell, I'm no expert in this, but I did a quick Googling. I, I believe it was closer to 0.88 millimeters. <laughs> so that's the size of a grain of sand, Matt. So difference between grain of sand and billions of miles, that is the degree that your understanding is off by. Okay, but this is where he gets into like the fascinating levels of wrong because he's like all the waters of all the oceans and all the giraffes. And I realized, oh God, he thinks the Big Bang was like a clown car. <laughs> right, like all the giraffes were just like squeezed in next to each other. It just exploded out and all like, here's some water and some giraffes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, because I honestly, this was the point in the movie where I lost my atheism. Because look, they point out explosions can't cause corn dogs and there are corn dogs. <laughs> right. Yeah. So but this is Raw Matt who's pointing it out. He, he's yeah. talking very intensely about what explosions can and can't do. And I wrote in my notes, ah, I think I've just worked out why he's in prison. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be very intense about explosions. Uh, this is where we also meet his his poor atheist YouTuber for this film. This is your friendly neighborhood atheist <laughs> who very clearly didn't realize how long he was going to be outdoors when he picked out that jacket. <laughs> this dude he is so clearly freezing to death through this whole fucking movie and he's doing he's doing his best he's trying to be intellectually honest but he's doing it against matt powell so he's like i mean it's negative 48 degrees and matt powell just asked me homo says what i'm not really sure <laughs> how to respond yeah i gotta say like Honestly, especially when we're comparing him to that last guy that he roped in, the raging atheist that he had in this last movie, this guy does as well as I think you really could hope to do in a movie that Matt Powell's going to edit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because we get like five seconds of the interview before they cut away to slow motion, which, you know, obviously means that Matt Powell must have been crushing it. And that's why he cut away. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to make this poor guy look too bad. Yeah. I uh, can't help but notice that Matt Powell has never challenged us to a debate. And I, um, I don't know, Matt, I'll bring marshmallows. I'm just saying I will bring marshmallows. <laughs> I'm not saying what I will do with those marshmallows. <laughs> But I guarantee no, Andrew you Andrew said not. we're not allowed to say what you would do with those marshmallows when we're You will recording. not get a clean cut, my friend. 
<laughs> there will be no way to take out of context <laughs> what I do. <laughs> Yeah, so this poor guy. So what's amazing here too is like he Matt's so dumb that he thinks he got all the bad stuff out a lot of the times, but he didn't because clearly your friendly neighborhood atheist guy is saying, "Dude, you have to stop saying atheists believe X because that's not what atheism means, right? Science believes X is what you mean. Atheists just don't believe in God." But because Matt Powell's editing it and talking over him and not listening to him, he tries to interpret that as no atheist has ever said those words. Right. 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 Which he disproves by showing a clip out of context of a guy going, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, it. that's all we get. Yeah. The, the, the cuts are so brutal where, to cover where anybody says anything reasonable. And, and as you say, stuff that Matt leaves in just still shows how terrible he is at what he's doing. He asked the question of your friendly atheist, do you think artificial intelligence always requires a designer? Or have you just not looked up the word artificial to understand the meaning <laughs> of the word artificial? Because <laughs> definitionally, <laughs> that's what that means okay and I, we haven't really talked about the stock footage that he's been using through this but we're gonna fucking traipse lightly over the back of a space piano as the title introduces part three what evolution actually teaches <laughs> spoiler alert this will not be what evolution actually <laughs> no, no, I, won't. <laughs> I, I i was right about to type into my notes oh million dollars says that we get surfing monkeys here but then i saw eli's notes and sure, sure enough it's a surfing monkeys i also i i quite like that they started with bbc breakfast news footage of them talking about the surfing monkeys thing so i thought oh that's charlie and naga from uh, bbc breakfast i have sat on that sofa and debated a homeopath on that very sofa oh, really it a, yeah it was a lovely little bit of uh, nostalgia for me there. there you go <laughs> right on right on he's dead now but that was unrelated oh okay <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> or is it matt powell huh <laughs> I'll make the website if you make the movie, Matt. <laughs> Call me. All right. So yeah, this is, by the way, where I realized that I had 11 tabs open on my browser just to fact check his nonsense. Like every <laughs> second sentence, I was like, that's not right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So the headline says monkeys who sailed 900 miles across the Atlantic. They're reading that from the goddamn Daily Mail, by the way. So again, that's the source <laughs> work he's working. Like for a scientific discovery, he uses someone on the BBC reading a Daily Mail article. Well, he also provides a screenshot of the headline from Google. Not the article. No, <laughs> no. No, and that's because when he does show us an actual article or even better, a scientific study later on and show us like a little bit of it, we can see the bit directly underneath, which we'll come to, which just completely negates his conclusion drawn from that study. So he's now just, he's learned, for, I think, from, uh, from part of this and he's just showing us it on Google rather than giving us the full context. Right. And he does this a couple of times. He does this very deceptively, right? When he's giving information wrong... He'll have somebody just Googling it and going, wow, I didn't think that I, that would be correct, but I Googled it and that's correct. But then when he's just making shit up, he just doesn't go back to that guy. That, that guy, mm -hmm. by the way, is Paul Wittenberger. Yeah, the guy who did the great culling Our Water, the, yes. uh, the anti-fluoride <laughs> film that we did on GAM. He's their yes. new creationism expert. <laughs> yeah, he just shows up and he goes, we just see him occasionally Googling something and going, wow, Matt Powell sure is right according to my brief Google. <laughs> but they show the Googling and like the sources on like saying that that the monkeys going from Africa to South America are like National Geographic, CNN, Smithsonian.org. And I'm like, did you guys mean to do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love how Paul Wittenberg is like, oh yeah, atheists, they believe this. It's crazy. Now, let me tell you about how the flu ride on our water is designed to make us all infertile, right? <laughs> that's, that's his expert. We also introduce my favorite expert of the movie here, Wayne Braden. And if you're wondering his credentials, he is a retired police officer. Yes. yes, he is. Yes, he is. So you know his science is up. <laughs> and I love his his part of this is to speculate as to the motivation of the monkeys for crossing the water. It's like those police instincts just never leave you. You go straight to motive. <laughs> this, <laughs> they have no motive. This is so fucking amazing. <laughs> it is. It is. I, I love. So he does the background research on how long it would take <laughs> monkeys to get to America. And that background research on the monkey raft involves him thinking about how long it would take you to row there in a canoe right now. That is. Yeah. His background research. It's amazing. Right. He says, I did some research on this. I wrote in my notes. I bet it wasn't reading the actual fucking articles that Paul just Googled, was it? 
<laughs> it absolutely was not. And they talk about like, and you know, it's got to be so hard. How a monkey's going to be able to do that? And what about the tides? The tides are going to keep getting in the way. You, what? And they talk about the tides being an impediment to this because they assume the monkeys were trying to get to America. Yes, right. So, exactly. so, like a kind of capuchin Columbus is what they were right. thinking this was. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, and we should point out, by the way, that this is coming from our team of four overdressed men in a cornfield. Yep, yes. At a kitchen table in a cornfield. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're sat in the middle of a crop circle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. But he's he's got so many objections that are so beautiful. Mm. He's like, all right, so I Google canoed how long it would take you to get there. So that's bullshit evolution. Monkeys can't eat salt water. Nailed it. Destroyed it. <laughs> Finally, and this is probably my strongest argument. I'm glad you're locking this onto the internet to put it in the digital record forever. Sharks would not ignore a giant <laughs> canoe full of monkeys. The sharks would eat the monkeys. They would get eaten by sharks. <laughs> oh, the shark thing is sharks so good. Sharks love Obviously. monkey. <laughs> sharks are a big fan of monkey. <laughs> and what I love about all this is they're using this to prove that the one of the scientific theories about how monkeys got to America could not possibly be true because monkeys would have to go to one place to another place. But they're using this to throw out the science and prove Noah's Ark. So how do the <laughs> monkeys get from where Noah's Ark landed to America if it isn't by exactly the same thing? Right. And they're saying, well, you know, monkeys, you know, they'd run out of food. And what are they going to drink while they're on, the, on their raft? They can't yes. drink the seawater. They'll run out of fresh water. So, but your version is Noah's Ark. <laughs> right, exactly. And their argument is literally, well, it would have taken them 65 days. And that's ridiculous. Now, 40 days and 40 nights, well, that's, that's entirely that's really possible. Yeah, <laughs> well, totally and by fine. the way, they're going to argue later on that the flood was much longer than 40 days and 40 nights, right? Yes. They're, they're going to go with the 371 day interpretation. There are, for those who aren't aware, there are three different amounts of time that the Bible gives you for how long the flood lasts. Um, but yeah, they're going to go with the longest stuff. But they do it all the way through the film. They yep. say, well, the scientific version says this, and that can't possibly be true. But the same thing would have to have been true for your version of it. Right. So you're not actually debunking anything here, you're, or, or you're debunking everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What I love the most about this scene, though, is that because we keep, we're we going around the table watching all these overdressed pastors and an ex-police officer explain why monkeys could never sail across the ocean blue. And one of them says, you know, it's really embarrassing that we even have to talk about this. And I'm like, finally got something right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says, it's, I find it really insulting and embarrassing that we even have to address these arguments that we have summarily failed to refute completely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got all dressed up in this suit that was for my wedding and will only also be for my funeral. Because we talk <laughs> about how monkeys can't survive on a boat, which is what I believe deeply in my heart of hearts. <laughs> so all right, well, I'll tell you what. Surfing monkey references are the key to our Matt Powell drinking game, so we actually need a quick break at this point, but we're going to be back in a flash with even more of The Atheist Religion. Guys, you really didn't have to do this. No, Marsh, I insist you fly over here every time you do a record with us. It's the least we could do. Is, is that what I do? Yes. Plus, we've prepared only the finest in English cooking for you. Yeah, yeah, no, we've got boiled boot. We have Shamhamshire pudding. And curdled curdles. Right, now, I'm pretty sure only two of those are actual English foods. But besides, guys, if you want to have easy and delicious home cooking, why don't you just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? They're America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal, seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. So... So you don't want any sheep splatter pie? I'm, I'm not saying that. It's just that HelloFresh cuts out all the stressful meal planning and grocery sto store trips. So you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. Wow. I don't know, Marsh. I like variety. I can't just eat a different state of potato every day forever until I'm dead. Well, you don't know what you're missing then. With 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, there's something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. Yeah, actually, HelloFresh sent us a box, and my favorite part was that everything came in its own bag, so it just took seconds to unpack into the fridge. Wow, that does sound fast. But Marsh, how do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful12 and use the code Awful12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful12 and use code Awful12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping? That's right. 
Well, you sold us, Marsh. Come on, Eli, let's put away this boiled boiledness and steak and kidney pie. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm still eating that. Nice. That last one's real. It is, yeah. It's delicious. No, it's not. Okay. All right, all right, everybody, settle down. If we could all stop uh, throwing our poop for a second. Thank you. I'd like to call this meeting of the world's first monkey cruise to order. Uh, so as you all know, according to Matt Powell's fevered imagination about a headline of an article that he didn't bother to read, we, a bunch of monkeys, uh, have chartered a boat uh, from here in Africa to South America. Any questions? Yes. Uh, what, what are we going to eat? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we are not actually traveling in a boat. Uh, we're actually going to be on a, a giant raft made of fallen vegetation, so uh, we can probably eat that. Um, Plus, we can fish. We can fish? Like, with poles and lines and bait and tackle? No, that's, um, that's stupid. Uh, uh, but, but, but we can reach into the water and, and, and catch clams and algae and stuff like you can literally YouTube us doing. Oh, yeah. Look oh, at that. We can grab so clams. We can. Look at us. Okay, but what about like, storms and shark attacks? Those all seem like super important things. Right, right. Yeah, so, um, again, the plan is not for one boat full of monkeys to succeed on the first ever trip, the theory is that one vegetation raft in all of the history of existence may have made it from the one place to the other. You see. Oh, okay, that see. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one last question. If this boat trip doesn't work out, does gravity still exist? I, I'm sorry, come again? Uh, I'm just thinking about how this event happening or not is marginally related to a separate, testable, and observable scientific phenomenon. So if this doesn't happen, is the science of gravity entirely debunked? No. Uh, no, it is, it's not. No. Okay, good, good. Yeah, that's good to know. That's right. good to okay. know. Uh, well, let's take a 15-minute break uh, to throw around some poop, and then we'll all meet back here in the clothes that Matt Powell thinks we made for ourselves and set sail. Sounds good. I'm a monkey. I am a monkey. And we're back for more of this shit. And I know that you've probably been thinking to yourself, what the hell is a discussion of evolution doing going on this long with no mention of space octopuses? But don't worry, <laughs> Matt is about to address that topic. <laughs> the topic that, you know how evolution teaches us that octopuses and squids come from outer space? <laughs> They're from space. Right. Okay. So I Googled the quote he throws up here. The first thing that comes up is Snopes going, nah, man, fucking no scientist ever suggested that fucking octopuses are aliens. <laughs> yeah. And it goes even further than that, because this is the point where he throws up a scientific study that postulates that octopuses are, and squids are aliens. And I paused it at that point and read the very next line, which is, However, the paper also noted that such an extraterrestrial origin of, uh, as an explanation of the emergence, of course, runs counter to the prevailing dominant paradigm. Yeah. So will all the documentaries you make me watch be refuted by the pause button? <laughs> everything seems, if you just yes. pause and carry on reading what they're showing you, it seems to do the job. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. He goes, I'm not kidding. I'm like, no, man, you're stupid. Kidding is a step up from what you are. <laughs> not kidding. You're lying, man. There's a difference. <laughs> But this, this is where ex-cop, who again is my favorite, mm -hmm. he counters this. You know, he's using that monkey science again. Mm -hmm. He's like, yep, yep. have you ever tried to catch a moving vehicle? And I was like, I'm fucking listening. <laughs> 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 well, my friends and I, when we were kids, we would try and jump onto a moving freight train. But if it was going fast, we couldn't. That's why squids probably couldn't hop on an asteroid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was going by their alien planet to come here. I can't decide what I love more about these explanations. How dumb their objections to panspermia are or the fact that Matt Powell really felt like he needed to take some time to explain to his audience that actually space squids would be fairly unlikely. I know you look at him and you're like, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. But no, no, it, it actually, <laughs> here are a couple of reasons why that would be doubtful. <laughs> yeah, it's great because it's it's so obvious that the police officer is picturing actual squid yes! actually in space, actually yes! an asteroid. 100%. Just like going, wee! Because then he talks about how like <laughs> when the asteroid comes into the Earth's atmosphere, you know, it would start burning up. And like, you know, he's picturing like calamari rain. That's what he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, he says, if squids were smart enough to evolve into space, why haven't they evolved into living on land? 
Where is the Landopus? Evolution is stupid. Why don't we have land octopuses? I'm like, that's the weak link in the chain for you, sir. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is wrong with you people? The other guy comes in to explain that this can't be true because octopuses and squids are mortal enemies. <laughs> they don't get along. Why? Because they're from the same planet. They're aliens from the same he goes, planet. He goes, why wouldn't they be friends? I'm like, well, okay, I mean... As a Transformers fan, I can think of reasons, but I, that should not be your chief objection. No, no, it, it absolutely shouldn't. And the thing is, all the way through as well, he thinks he's really smart by using the plural of octopus as octopi, right? Which isn't the plural of octopus, but he's he thinks he's really nope, really yeah. smart. For you. <laughs> I think you'll find about these octopi from space. But he's, he's completely wrong on that. Yeah, right. He feels like he's about to turn space octopus into an intellectual brain. <laughs> <laughs> and what one thing I do like here is that we get another taste of the stock footage and all the way through the stock footage that we've seen, one thing that's really nice is that all the stock footage of scientists has been pretty much entirely women. And I just like that the glass ceiling of being ridiculed in creationist propaganda is well and truly shattered now. <laughs> yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we, we cut, by the way, over to your friendly neighborhood atheist not buying the whole space squid thing exactly. Mm. Yeah. And he's got a look on his face as he's looking at Matt explaining this. The expression is an expression I've done a million times when talking to people who are telling me about things like space squid. Yeah. It's like, mm, okay, mm. go on. But I, I notice we don't cut to uh, Paul Wittenberg Googling this one. So strange. <laughs> no. Let me come back to him. Crazy. Later. All right. So, and then he explains that beards evolved so it wouldn't hurt as much when we got punched in the face. <laughs> right. And this makes sense. It makes total sense to me why Matt Powell doesn't understand how he got facial hair because he never did. <laughs> right. And so yeah, exactly. it's an alien concept to him. But I can't believe that he, he thinks beards came about because he got punched so much because his very smooth but utterly punchable face entirely disproves that theory. Right? Yeah. I wrote in my notes, if having a punchable face made you evolve a beard, Matt Powell would look like ZZ Top. <laughs> yeah, as, as would raw Matt. Well, look, okay, so I did a, a little bit of Googling. I obviously don't know anything about this shit, but it seems like like that that to me seemed reasonable, right? When, when they said that, I'm like, yeah, I could see how that happens. Like, you know, deers, antlers or something. I had always thought it was like a peacock plume thing, right? Just sexual selection. Yeah, yeah. But women don't like beards, obviously. They, they don't find them attractive. So it, it can't be that. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that sounds reasonable to me. But then we end up with raw Matt explaining to us that no, no, no. If you have a beard, your hair will cut you if you get punched. Mm. I have no, he tries to explain this using the the Vaseline that a cut man puts on a, a boxer's face, but they put it on like their cheekbones and shit. <laughs> it's yeah. not hairy part. We do a, get a great insight, though, where he's like, I've actually been punched in the face very hard, and my beard is why I bled. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been fine. And I was like, raw Matt, get with me, brother. I really want to hear why you got punched in the face. <laughs> And, and just to point out at this point with Romat, he's no longer in the prison yard. He's now on his webcam in the dark. Yeah. Because this what? movie wants to offend us in every possible right. way imaginable. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe he's indoors now because he ran out of yard time. You know, he, okay, his yard yeah. time expires. He's going to be back in, in lockup. <laughs> he's like he was in solitary for that portion of the film. Yeah. Now, I have been enjoying Raw Matt's contributions to the film so far. But could there be, I'm going to say, eight and a half minutes of him absolutely screaming about how monkeys don't wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this was amazing. Right, because he starts talking about how humans lost their fur because they were wearing clothes and didn't need it anymore, which is not, as I understand it, the consensus theory on why humans lost their fur. But he's given like a, the chicken and the egg argument. He's like, but why would we have needed clothes if we had the fur? Because he can't imagine a situation in which people might need multiple layers of clothing. Well, not even not even just multiple layers, also options. Because right. if you're moving from like a very shaded area into yeah. like an open plain, maybe you don't want to be massively hairy when you're trying to chase something down. But then thus winter comes and you don't want to be entirely exposed. So having no fur gives you the options of putting fur on and then taking it off again when you get too hot. Right. Well, and, and as if the editor is just fucking with them. You, it, Raw Matt starts talking about, well, you see those monkeys in the high mountains of Japan. They don't need jackets to stay warm. And then we cut to those monkeys sitting in hot springs so they don't freeze to death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he is 
again, he's screaming. <laughs> he People really have is. reported and put out a fire with less urgency <laughs> than he. <laughs> Fucking close. <laughs> Monkeys are fine. I thought at any moment it was going to pan over to an abused monkey who didn't have any clothes that was like, <laughs> Romat, don't give me the hose again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We also get like another couple of talking heads throughout this. We've seen like there's people whose name we didn't really pick up and people we haven't really mentioned. But what I will say about various different talking heads is so many of the people they talk to are just from this movie's production team. Because it's if you look, it's all the people who made uh, Our Water, the Great, Great Culling film. Oh, it's really? just them. So it's all people from that production team. So it's just the wow. guys on this film. They go like, so you're, you're making this film. Do you want to <laughs> Do you want to stay? Do you, you want to be on camera? Because <laughs> people the other keep saying no to us. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. I like the way you best boy, sir. How do you like <laughs> to sit in that interview chair and tell me that monkeys don't need clothes? <laughs> Then he brings up another one of Matt's favorite whipping boys, which is the fact that duckbill dinosaurs likely crossed the Mediterranean Sea, which he describes as the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, but it does get better because they also think that our source for this claim <laughs> is Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. He absolutely believes that. It's amazing. Because... The quote that he's actually citing means, look, I know that it's sometimes hard to believe things, but when you eliminate all the other possibilities, even things that seem really unlikely are true. Yeah. It is not. Watson, did you know that duckbilled dinosaurs can surf? <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. And he, he keeps pointing out how stupid he finds this, you know, and he says, like, you know, in order for evolution to be true, this stuff had to happen. And I wrote again, like, do we get to play that game, Matt? Because I've got some yeah. notes on what your thing involves. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're going to win this one. Yeah. And then, of course, we he shows footage of somebody in one of those Tyrannosaurus, those big inflatable Tyrannosaurus costumes out on a surfboard. Because that's, I guess, what, what he's assuming scientists believe happened. Yeah, he, he thinks that dinosaurs surfed as well rather than swam. Because I, I don't know why he assumes that the dinosaurs wouldn't have swam. But then you get like the pastor coming up and, and mocking the idea that dinosaurs could have done that at all. And he says, well, you know, what are they going to do? Are they going to eat fish while they're taking this journey? Yeah. It's like, well, what? <laughs> one, it wasn't really fish like we knew today. They'd have been a bit bigger. But also, two, there were underwater dinosaurs. So... Yes. Well, why and Why wouldn't they why eat fish? Why would they not eat fish? <laughs> we know animals eat fish, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he says dinosaurs aren't good fishermen. And I was really hoping to cut to like him on a fishing trip with inflatable tyrannosaurus. <laughs> like, See, he hasn't caught shit. Kevin, I, I've just been like really bad company on the boat. Like he's, he's fine fishing, but like you don't want to spend all day he's with him. too man. much noise and shit. Yeah. <laughs> How do you have to shit again, man? Stop. Is, you're wrecking this. Just a dinosaur, just before they catch the fish, just going, meh, to get the fish's attention <laughs> so you can breathe. And then, and then he says, like, he's like, and these people will believe that monkeys sailed across the Atlantic and the dinosaurs swam to Africa, but they still think that the Bible is too silly to believe. I'm like, what point do you think you just made, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to make a point, but then you beat me to it. <laughs> so, okay. And then we cut to part four, dinosaurs and man. And I'm like, Civil War pterosaur, here we come. <laughs> oh, so I, I, I hoped we'd get there because I did not know at this point that Matt Powell did believe dinosaurs and men lived side by side like in the Flintstones. So I was hoping we'd get there and we did. And I was so happy when it came up. Oh, oh and speaking of those fossilized arguments you were talking about from before, <laughs> Marsh, this is where he brings up the Mary Schweitzer discovery. Yeah. The dinosaur soft tissue. Ah, uh, yes. The lady we murdered for finding all that fresh, <laughs> fresh dinosaur blood. <laughs> and they, they use this clip from the first 60 Minutes special about her discovery, which is in like 1945. <laughs> it might as well be watched through a fucking pinafore. And, <laughs> and he's trying to do it out of context. So it's like, you discovered soft tissue in dinosaur bones. <laughs> yes. And they were mad at you. <laughs> and what they don't point out is that Mary Schweitzer was a young earth creationist until she made this discovery. And this was the yeah. evidence that persuaded her that Matt Powell was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, she was. Oh, Jesus. And and look, so they're saying like, well, this is soft tissue. It couldn't possibly be fossils. It, it, therefore, 
dinosaurs died in Noah's flood. And it's just what? It's just what? It's just 4,400 year old dinosaur meat. Then <laughs> mm. it would still have to fossilize, you fucking idiots. Yeah, I would have loved something to ask Matt Powell how long it takes for dinosaur soft tissue to rot. And yeah. just let him deal with that. <laughs> 4,401 years. years. <laughs> Uh, and he's trying to explain it to his half empty room slash church. Yeah. He's like, no, no, no. If you put dinosaur meat in a jar, it would rot. <laughs> if, even if the jar was in a jar that was in a jar. All right. Now I know what you're thinking. What if that jar was in another <laughs> jar? Well, <laughs> then we actually our haven't God done... is dead and Christ is not that risen. Is... <laughs> and the thing is, what they're doing here is saying, you know, this one piece of information disagrees with previously held beliefs about fossil preservation. Therefore, we throw out all of fossils, all of evolution, and we therefore have to accept Noah's flood, despite there being absolutely no evidence for that. Right. And the thing is, that's what conspiracy theorists do all the time. But Matt Powell's doing it deliberately. Yeah. Like conspiracy theorists don't even often realize they're doing that. Matt Powell must know he's doing that. He's doing it deliberately. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there's a point out here where he says, you know, because what actually happened is we discovered, like you said, that that, that soft tissues preserve and, and, and can fossilize under certain conditions, et cetera, et cetera. And so we just updated our models on what can and can't fossilize and what we can and can't find. But then they're trying to make this point that, Scientists refuse to ever change their beliefs no matter what. If anything ever comes up and contradicts their belief, they just pretend it's not true. And I'm like, no, man, we actually did change our beliefs. We just didn't change the part of them you wanted us to. <laughs> and here's what's so crazy about this. When you actually Google this, it's a bunch of nerds super excited to explain how and why this works. Yeah. It's no one being like, I'll fucking kill myself if this turns out to be <laughs> right. Triceratops yeah. jerky, man. Exactly. This is my limit. The thing that they really don't understand, and to the point where you, again, I think they have to intentionally not understand it, is that nothing excites scientists more than finding out something they thought was right is wrong. Like, that's where all the juicy science happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead of understanding that, what Matt Powell says is, you know, scientists only accept evidence that lines up with what they've already decided is true. Anyway, here's why this dinosaur bone proves no is true. And and again, his evidence is simply that evolution is wrong and therefore Noah's flood. Yeah, exactly. And Raw, by the way, cuts in here to be like, basically assure us that dinosaur DNA is pretty easy to come. I mean, like, you could, I could get you some dinosaur DNA by 4 p.m. I wouldn't even need a fucking <laughs> fake Barbasol can, okay? I will sell it to you on my crazy blog website. <laughs> <laughs> Along with CBD oil and a medicine that will make you immortal. <laughs> Oh, and th then, of course, we have to deal with behemoth, right? That time in the Bible where they talk about dinosaurs? Yeah, yeah. Matt even <laughs> introduced it by saying, so here's what the Bible says about dinosaurs. Something not about dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. He's like, but look, almost half of the descriptors of behemoth could be attached to dinosaurs. <laughs> this is a Christian documentary, so now it's time for me to not get a dick joke for 10 minutes. <laughs> His trunk. Huh? His big... Thick, meaty trunk. Oh, you could run your mouth up and down that trunk. It'd be far too big for you. <laughs> That's weird. It's powerful muscles in its loins. Um, <laughs> probably a brontosaurus. Why, I guess they had really muscular loins, those brontosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> so. And by the way, okay, so I, I have to point this out too, because this is a moment where Matt Powell thinks he's gotten a gotcha. Right. But he's gotten the exact fucking opposite. He's too dumb to know it. We cut back to him with the uh, your friendly neighborhood atheist. And the guy says, hey, man, you know, I'm in no way an expert on science. That's not a field that I know a lot about. And Matt goes like, aha. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, this scene was introduced via a, a quote from Romans about how fools thought they were wise. And yeah. you've just followed your own smug yeah. idiocy <laughs> with the thing about, you know, those people who were fools, who thought they were wise, were actually fools. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. This, has this movie become self-aware at this point? Right. And immediately after that is, is the atheist guy going like, I actually don't know very much about that, man. I'm, I'm not going to speculate. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know much about everything. Yeah. Is my point. No, all the I'm Matt Powell. <laughs> also, what's with the weird off brand atheism, right? He had the raging atheist, which is very clearly Diet Coke of you. Now we've got your friendly atheist, which is the fucking Mr. Pib of Hemet Meta. Like, what is, why can't he get the brands? Well, because nobody in their right fucking mind would agree to be in his, like, no offense to YFN atheist. I think actually that dude did a pretty good job, all things considered. Yeah. I think the right response is to say no yeah. when Matt Powell invites you to do something like that. And I think most atheists, most people with, you know, most people who already have a bit of an audience would not bother with that shit. Yeah, but you say nobody in their right mind would agree to go on that. And you say that after we've already heard Eli say he's desperate to be interviewed by Matt Powell. Well, that's Powell. true. So <laughs> it all checks out. It all checks out. You let me do my marshmallow well, thing. Exactly. The YouTube that's the channel thing. shuts down. I, if, if YFN did this so that he could get secret video of him shoving marshmallows up a Matt Powell's ass or something, I would totally forgive him on this. <laughs> Reach out to us, man. You yeah. can be a part of this plan. <laughs> we know you already got You've already end. got a connection. <laughs> we, we'll bring the marshmallows. You bring Matt Powell. <laughs> All right. So now we get part five, creation versus evolution, which was also parts two through four, but okay, whatever. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's illegal. And this is where we learn it's illegal to believe the thing that they're making a movie about. Yeah. Yeah. Evolution is the only theory protected by law. You know, go teach alternative to gravity at flight school and see just how well, yeah. uh, how well that works out. You know, medical right. schools don't even let you teach your free thought alternatives to germ theory. You're being oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So he says, like, you know, if your theory needs to be protected by law, it's probably not a very good theory. Don't say Riffer. Don't say Riffer. Don't say Riffer. <laughs> he also... We cut back to him with the, the friendly neighborhood atheist here, and he's like, we can't create life in a lab. We've tried every possible method. One, I feel like that's a very broad use of we. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel like you did much of anything. Two, I don't think they've tried Pop Rocks and come. Yeah, right. <laughs> so until a scientist jerks off onto Pop Rocks, I will remain an agnostic <laughs> about whether or not we can create life in a lab, Matt Powell. An agnostic. <laughs> Yeah, and then, of course, Raw Matt cuts in here to explain to us that good teaching would mean telling kids both sides of an issue and letting them decide what to believe. How are they still doing the teach both sides thing in 2021? Like, that dinosaur soft tissue should have rotten by now, but even it would have outlasted <laughs> that argument. That argument is so much older. Oh, my God. Look, I'm like, name any subject where that would be desirable, man. <laughs> Literally any fucking academic subject where that's what you'd want to do. But this is where we get Toad King again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Toad King explains that water couldn't have resulted in life because water destroys molecules. That's why fish don't exist. Don't. What the fuck is he saying? <laughs> That's why fish aren't. <laughs> yeah. He, well, he's trying to say that DNA is destroyed by water. So DNA couldn't develop in water. It's like nobody says it developed in cells, man. Just, <laughs> just this. You, Fucking idiots. Like, again, this, like, if you had any interest in knowing this shit, you would just know this shit. You would have looked it up and you would know this. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. But instead, what they do is they just have a series of different men saying exactly the same thing, as if that represents <laughs> consensus or strengthening your argument. Right. Well, everyone, you know, four out of four people in this fucking cornfield agree. <laughs> <laughs> I was super distracted at this point of the movie because Raw Matt is sitting in front of a very nice, very high-end grill. Mm. And I was just like, oh, that's a nice grill. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that as well, actually. <laughs> oh, I bet that does propane and gas. Oh, it's grabbing. But why does he need that? He's Raw Matt. Why does he need to cook <laughs> stuff? He's Raw Matt. Surely if anybody's into raw eating, it's Raw Matt. <laughs> All right, so and then he, so they spend a lot of time, and I, I have to put this up. Right, they spend a lot of time talking about how dumb the concept of abiogenesis is. It's so fucking stupid. You can't make uh, life from non-life, and I'm like, but your thing also has abiogenesis, right? Just like the monkeys <laughs> still have to get to South America, your thing also has a. You get there with dust and fucking magic wands. Yeah, <laughs> our fucking stuff is dumb because of water and DNA. Right, but yours is because of a wizard. Right. So I see. 
You've just added a wizard to a thing that's hard to understand. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's there's another thing that Dr. Raw Matt says about it, when you know you see this when you look under a microscope. But the thing is, if you look at him, he's clearly a man that if you gave him a microscope, he'd take the lenses out and he'd use it to smoke meth. 100 <laughs> percent There's no two ways about it. Right. Yeah, exactly. My notes are literally, I would love to watch Raw Matt attempt to use a microscope. <laughs> and and my notes are I bet you eight thousand dollars worth of meth that Raw has never looked at a microscope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but he says at that point, after he gives us his, his microscope wisdom, he says, you know, I go with what we can see and what we can test. And I'm like, you're the religious guy. <laughs> I, literally, the first thing that's on your blog is that you think you can live forever, Raw Matt. Dude. It's like, right there. <laughs> so, and I love how quick Raw is to add to, like, everything he says he has to, like, close off by going, also, atheists are a bunch of stupid poopy heads. Mm. <laughs> like he, the whole fucking movie he's trying to pick a fight with us in middle school well can I just say I kind of feel like we have influenced Matt there yeah right uh huh it feels like Matt listened to our podcast which we know for scientific fact is what happened yeah uh huh <laughs> and he was like okay so they like name calling I guess I'm gonna... <laughs> oh G Jesus forgive me for saying this but they're dumb <laughs> Dumb, dumb, dummy faces. But if that's true, and he is listening and adapting to what you want him to be, you can really fuck with that. And you've got the space to really lead him down some dark places. Matt, Matt, we will give you a spot on Vulgarity for Charity, Matt. All right, so... so You'll be our top donor prize. <laughs> All right, so and then they're going to tell us about genetic entropy, which is a bullshit thing creationists made up so they'd have science words. Like, seriously, Google genetic entropy, you'll get Google telling you it's a load of shit followed by 37 creationist websites. <laughs> okay, but the best part about it is they use the science of Michael Keaton's multiplicity. <laughs> That's... This theory is based on the part of the movie Multiplicity what? where Michael Keaton was like, yeah, if you clone a clone, it comes out different. Well, it, essentially, yeah. Right. So he says th this is so fucking insane. The, the fucking frog accountant guy comes out and he says, well, we know from the Human Genome Project that every generation we lose one to two percent of our genetic information. We've been about 250 generations. That that leaves us 3% of our, less, less than 2.5% of our DNA would remain. If I'm right about the things I just said, we don't exist. So... <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So like, in fairness to him, he is an excellent illustration of information being lost. So he is doing a great job of building up his theory. <laughs> well, yeah, because at this point, he, he actually does the math himself. And he's like, so at this point, my own thing kind of disproves even my time. I guess the Earth is 19 minutes old. Fuck, come back to me. Bro, come back, come to, back me. to me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to eat some flies, sit on some eggs, and some lukewarm water. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly they need a minute to rethink their arguments. So we're going to take another quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Is Matt Powell listening to this toss? Does he have to apologize to Jesus every time we say fuck? Should I say fuck, 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 just in case? Find out the answers to other questions and less when we return for the clearly delineated conclusion of the atheist religion. Babies have 100 more bones than adults do. Hawaii moves 7.5 centimeters closer to Alaska every year. Polar bears are almost invisible to infrared cameras. Uh, Eli, I'm sorry, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, hey, no, uh, job, job security. But, so, so wait, so, saying science trivia into our podcast is job security now? Yeah, it is. Uh, speaking of which, a Venus is the only planet that spins clockwise. Uh, Uranus does too, actually. So I'm, I'm sorry, okay, can, can we go back to my last question about, you know, how... Oh, I, I have no idea. I just Googled crazy but true science facts. No, 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 I think that, that it's no, Venus that, is fall. No, how, how science trivia is job security. Oh, so after this week's episode, I realized that Matt Powell makes one or several YouTube videos every time he hears a science fact that he doesn't understand or doesn't sound like it makes sense to him. And, and then we get to review those movies and make fun of him. So I'm, just, you know, feeding the furnace, if you will. Huh. Hey, speaking of which, did you know that stomach acid is strong enough to dissolve stainless steel? Ooh, I did not. And I'm guessing neither did Matt Powell. So, you know, cha-ching. Cha-ching, indeed. 
Just Google it. It's right on your phone. No can do, Noah. I don't know how Google works either. Oh, hey, fellas. What's the matter? Well, it, hey, Marsh. Eli's gotten a little too into this week's movie, and, and now he just doesn't believe in anything that he finds confusing. Or mildly surprising. Yeah. Well, what did you tell him that he found confusing? That the American Dental Association recommends chewing sugar-free gum for 20 minutes after meals. Why would they tell you to eat candy? No. -uh. For the last time, it's not candy. Quip gum can help prevent cavities and freshen breath when chewed for 20 minutes after eating. It's sugar-free, and it has tooth-friendly xylitol with zero calories. And to satisfy your taste buds, Quip added a long-lasting mint flavor, crunchy tri-layer design, and stamped it all with the classic Quip tongue. See? Candy. Plus, it comes in a rocket ship. A rocket ship? He's talking about the slim travel-ready dispenser available in five colors, metal or plastic, which packs and protects up to 10 gum pieces at a time and fits into just about any purse or pocket for on the go. Exactly. It's too cool looking, so it's not real. And in a world where we all need to be extra safe and hygienic, the quick release button means you can still share with your friends. No wrappers, hands or hassles. Yeah. When you click it, it shoots out like a cool little pew. I mean, I mean, it doesn't. No, it doesn't do that because I don't understand how it works so i mean i imagine springs are involved somewhere yep, yep. but here's the best part Maybe. if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now you can get a free plastic dispenser with any refill plan that's a free dispenser at getquip.com slash awful that's g-e-t-q-u-i-p.com slash awful you can also find the quip electric toothbrush refillable floss and more in the oral care aisle at your local walmart quip the good habits company all right noah we'll go to this walmart you speak of and see if this Quip is real. Oh, guys, can I come? I've always wanted to see inside of a Walmart. No, you don't. You really don't trust me. I mean, I'm, I'm going to buy like a, a TV and a big bar of peanuts from the same aisle. Okay. Yeah. And we're back for still more of this shit. This is the part where Matt explains the laws of thermodynamics to us. So, you know, he's going to nail this shit to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His point here is the first law of thermodynamics proves atheists wrong. As long as you misrepresent both them and it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, I put it in my notes. So like, oh, I'm sorry. I assumed when the words first law of thermodynamics came up that that's what he was going to be talking about. But no, no, not really. Matt, it's a sentence. You could have thrown it up there on the screen. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, but that's the thing is that actually throwing up the first law of thermodynamics fucks up his point. <laughs> so, and, and I want to point out this because, again, this is sort of Matt's MO. When he describes our things, like when he describes scientific stuff, he adds phrases like poofed into existence magically, yeah. it, like in a derogatory way. In his argument that the universe literally poofed into existence magically. Yeah, like that is literally those words are the, the thing that those words mean are your argument, bro. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't understand why you keep doing that. <laughs> no, but he thinks it's a really excellent argument. And we know that because he prefaces it with this is a really excellent argument. Yes, which is yes, why I do whenever does. I'm really convinced <laughs> that my argument is excellent. If this argument wasn't so good, would I really have preceded it with that much science stock footage? <laughs> <laughs> And then we, we move on, quote unquote, to the second law of thermodynamics, which is about equilibrium, though you would never know that just by watching this movie. Yes. Mm. If, if chaos created the universe, how come there's so much water? <laughs> so why is literally it. What? Why is the water his example, his go-to example for thing there's too much of to cram into a singularity? Not the planet the water sits on. Not the much larger sun that it orbits. Not all those other far bigger stars. It's the water. Why? Do you think that's because of the whole Genesis thing of separating the heavens above from the heavens below and that being like a separation in the water? Do you think he's kind of saying that the water, it needs to have been there from the start. Obviously, there was water there from the start. Well, you, the Big Bang can't explain that. Well, here's God to explain it. Okay, but may, that makes as much sense as anything I could come up with, right? Like, I was like, dude, you might as well be using a pair of gloves as your fucking example. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's the case, it kind of suggests he doesn't realize or doesn't accept that water is hydrogen and oxygen. Like water can be made from smaller stuff and that smaller stuff could have been somewhere else. Right. No, again, like it's the clown car analogy that, that Eli used. He actually thinks mm. that there were tiny little drafts squeezed into the singularity that popped out at the Big Bang, apparently. 
fucking old frog guy comes in, by the way, to explain the second law of thermodynamics. This is what he says. He says, the second law of thermodynamics says that you start with the complex and you get the simple. That is not at all what the second law of thermodynamics, <laughs> that's not what it implies. Mm-hmm. That's not, not remotely. Th- to be uh, fair, that is what the second law of thermodynamics does to him. <laughs> 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 it started as the second law of thermodynamics and yeah. it resulted. <laughs> in my no, that simplistic is fair. nonsense. What, what came from his mouth was very simple. It was entirely wrong, but it was quite simple. <laughs> and not equal. So there you go. Yeah, Disproven. right, right. No, yeah, exactly. If, if anybody represents entropy visually, it's this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so, oh, God. And then he promises that he's going to explain the fucking frog accountant promises that he's going to explain how space dust proves God's existence. And I don't mind saying you have my fucking attention, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was intrigued. I was intrigued. I was like, all right, buddy. You believe that the stars are going to fall out of the sky any day now. (laughs) But you're about to take me on a journey about how much space dust there is. Yes. (laughs) His his space dust argument, it is ludicrous because his argument was there's dust out there that's been held by the gravity of the sun. But if it was old, it would already have dissipated but for the gravity of the sun right, that I mentioned that's already holding it. <laughs> well, but Marsh, if there was really not a god, how would Saturn's rings be so lumpy? Right. But the thing <laughs> is, he's saying Saturn's rings are lumpy because it's young, but they are young. Like, they're 100 million years old yeah. and Saturn's 4 billion years old. That's that's quite young. Exactly. They're lumpy because they're young. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Although this does now make me want to go to Frog Guy's house and like move a lamp. And when he comes home, he's like, oh, shit, it's been a million years. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Everyone knows the only reason stuff moves is time. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So and then we, we move on to the biblical flood using the words, quote, God flooded the world 4,400 years ago and killed every single living thing on the planet in their movie about how I should worship that dude. Yeah. All right. Let's stop talking about this crazy bullshit science. Anyways, the kangaroos, they get off the boat in Mesopotamia. (laughs) They hop back to Australia. Let's talk hard science. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Noah and his family, they get off the boat and they fucked each other's brains out. Like the kind of interfamily stuff that Heath would bookmark. That's what it was like (laughs) shortly after the, the flood. And then he explains that they found fossilized monkeys clinging to vegetation rafts. Uh, like, uh, oh. Of course, that, that's used as evidence that the monkeys crossing the ocean to, to South America could obviously be true. And he's like, but why would they be clinging to a raft if there wasn't a biblical flood? <laughs> yeah, you know, the only event in which monkeys ever drowned. <laughs> this this was so frustrating. Like when you're talking about the flood, you shouldn't bring up how monkeys got from one place to another because you're, <laughs> you've just given you you brought you could have just gone away and no one would have noticed that your problem your thing still had a problem with that. But you put it right here in the middle of it. Yeah. Yep. And then he explains how how the whale bones got to the top of the mountains <laughs> there. <laughs> I was like, he thinks it's mountain climbing whales. My money is on mountain climbing whales. <laughs> well, this is where we go to Raw Matt, isn't it? Where Raw Matt says, you know, the, the whales, you know, they, they they die and then the, the whale carcass like floats up. And Raw Matt says, you can just watch like these whale carcasses. You can watch on YouTube or just a video of a whale carcass rotting. It's not illegal. And that's a really risky thing to do, given that his audience is currently watching their movie on YouTube because a rotting <laughs> whale carcass would have been a way more fun yeah, than to watch. It's like, wow, I can, I can get rotting whale carcass on this thing? Fuck. Why I'm one click away from that. <laughs> Recommended videos, rotting whale carcass. Yes, please. <laughs> so, okay. So and I, I, I want to point out what he's saying has happened there. Okay. So depending on which of the three contradictory accounts you you take out of the Bible, the flood lasted either 40 days and nights or 150 or I think it's 371. Anyway, one way or the other, they're saying that during that time, a significant enough number of whales died and happened to like just be over mountains when that happened Mm -hmm. for us to be finding fossilized whales on mountains now. Yeah, yeah. And, and part of his argument, I think, is that the whales then got like eaten by the mountain crabs because all the flesh was eaten off them by <laughs> mountain crabs. Because he says the flesh is eaten off them by crabs, but yes. these have got to be mountain crabs, right? Mountain crabs. Why would there mm-hmm. be crabs on the mountains? And then he's just like, there's no other possible way for them to get on top of mountains. And I'm like, are you, what if the earth has tectonic plates and is four mm. point? No other way! 
Okay. Yeah, there is no other option mentioned in this movie. What? They yeah. acknowledge that <laughs> later. He'll be like, they say tectonic plates. And I really wanted a shot of him just smashing two plates together. See? No whale. <laughs> <laughs> And then, okay, so then we look at the Grand Canyon, which is great evidence for young Earth creationists. Okay, is his <laughs> argument, no, because there are groundhog holes in the ground, there would be groundhog holes in the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Yes! <laughs> yeah, why are there no animal holes at the bottom of this really, 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 really deep canyon? <laughs> It must have, it must be because it was caused by the flood. Right, right. Because I'm like, I'm reading my notes because there's a planet on top of them. I'm thinking it's because <laughs> they would be pressurized. Jesus. He's literally asking it a place like, why aren't there any trees down there? It's like, are you asking why all things aren't fossilized? Because, <laughs> you know, we just talked about how whale carcasses float and get eaten by. Do you, do you need to talk to Raw? I can put you in touch with Raw. And I love this because he goes, but if you actually look at the world, you'll find that the layers are flat, right? Because they were all swept there at the same time by the flood. And then he cuts to stock footage of the layers not at all in any way being flat. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like Also, but what, how does that make any fucking sense? The reason there, there would be sedimentary layers that are different colors is because they were all laid down at the same time? What the fuck would that even mean in your argument? Well, you, you've got to bear in mind, Noah, that as he says, the facts show that it was caused by a flood. I mean, he doesn't show us those facts or in any oh, way give us any okay. indication. All right, of so those there facts, are some but... facts that I, I, I did, I didn't know. I'm not privy to yeah, all the new you shit. Earn those facts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we get to the goddamn clams. Clams. <laughs> So he points out that they found giant clam fossils on Mount Everest, which I don't even know if that's true, but 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 let's assume that it is. So he's arguing that, okay, I, we'll get to what he's arguing, but but part of his argument, the crux of his argument is that during the flood, during the time of the flood, whether that's 40 or 150 or 371 days, giant clams, which weigh upwards of 600 fucking pounds, Clammed their way up Mount Everest. Yep. Just by a little, you know, clamming. They turn to each other. You know, this is my only shot to get up there. I'm going <laughs> to check it out. I'm going to see. <laughs> Bunch of dead tourists around here. This is crazy. <laughs> also, he spends a tremendous amount of time on the fact that clams can't stay closed when they die. The second it dies, it opens. They have to open. It's impossible that they don't open. But why Why did the clams drown in the flood? Is, that, <laughs> is his argument that the clams drowned? <laughs> <laughs> so, what, but okay, but so, but what? What I guess what he's saying is that all the sediment was, for whatever reason, dropped immediately on the clams all at once when the waters, with the flood waters, receded. So you know that would be why there was no remnants of any other thing at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if you can close a dead clam like with sediment, you can close it with anything heavy enough. So right. you could find right. a fossilized clam closed if a tree fell on it, for example. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Like, next time you see a dead clam, if you pinch it closed, you just disprove the Big Bang. That's how that works. <laughs> also, the fact that there were clams bigger than a human being, kind of weird that your God made a clam that big. Like, what was God thinking when he made a clam? Because it's evolution, <laughs> fine. We understand why things get big and small right. and stuff yeah. depending mm -hmm. on the environment. But God just like, no. I want a fucking massive clam, like a really fucking big clam. Because I can, because I can, all right. I bet the Japanese will hunt them to near extinction. You're going to make a chowder, damn it. And there's one other thing here, because this is Raw Matt who's talking, and he ends every one of his lies with, there are no other options. Yeah. And it's a tactic I am going to start adopting. Like, <laughs> who ate the last of these M&Ms? Oh, yeah, a seagull must have flown through the window, stolen them and flown away. There are no other options. <laughs> oh, I guess it's true then, yeah. I'm the one editing this video. There are no other, <laughs> other options. <laughs> So, yeah, and, and then we, we get the, again, to talk about some fossilized fucking arguments. We get the whole poly straight fossils thing about, well, how could this tree be in multiple strata if if it was just, okay, set up like a river flooding? I get it. Okay. Oh. I see now. How it At one point, do they say that trees wouldn't just stand there? They'd move? Yes. Like they'd go get coffee if it started to set up the <laughs> 
And they're like, and they'll find fossilized trees in the desert. And I'm like, well, there are trees in, in deserts. But, that, but like, <laughs> how does that help you? Like in our worldview, like the earth is billions of years old where once there was a desert, you know, there used to be an ocean floor. There used to be a forest or mm -hmm. whatever. How does that help your steady state earth shit? Right. Well, God just yeah. just put them there to you know fuck with us and stuff. But just fuck with the scientists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 yeah. he's a prankster. You know. All right. So, and then he points out that science has the problem of infinite regress. He does not point out that so does re religion. <laughs> 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 so, and, and I love the way he tries to present this. Right. So he says because he's the, most of this is done through his conversation with your friendly neighborhood atheist, and he's like. Well, all things uh, that were created have a cause, and therefore, if time was created, it must have been created by something out of time. I mean, that's not how cause and effect work. By that argument, a domino could not knock down a domino, dude. What the fuck <laughs> yeah. are you you saying? Also, he's fucking up the Kalam cosmological yes. argument. Uh -huh. which yes, yes, yeah, he is. Because the Kalam cosmological argument is a bad word trick, right? It doesn't work on kindergartners, right? If you're like, hey, you know how there can't be anything inside my closed hand? And the kindergartner's like, can I see your hand? And it's like, fuck you, you atheist piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the verbal equivalent of the Kalam cosmological argument. But he's just like, well, you know, science says... You can't see what's inside my hand, you ain't. <laughs> he, he does it so obviously. You can see, you can just see and hear the the, the slight of rhetoric through it. Because like anything which comes into being except my thing must have had a start. Right. So anything <laughs> other than my thing needs to have something to have started it. The, the Kalam cosmological argument is so fucking stupid because it begins with, all right, first we're going to create a category that only has the thing I'm trying to prove exists in it. <laughs> and then fuck you <laughs> and by the way uh, credit where credit is due your friendly neighborhood atheist catches that he's doing that because obviously this guy's come across the, the Kalam cosmological mm. argument and he argues his way out of it but Matt's too dumb to realize that he has so Matt swings all the way to our side of the argument by accident to talk about how unconsciousness can't cause consciousness so he, he swung so far away that he's now saying only a domino can knock down a domino. <laughs> <laughs> and that domino's name is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Fuck. This is why we're not allowed to meet in my house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why mom said I couldn't have atheists over. So, no, actual quote. This is his sort of his, his wrap up on this point. He says, that's what the Big Bang is. It's a poof. It's an imagination. Like, that's not even your argument. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? That's not even a sentence in the English language. Also, Matt Powell is working off of notes yes. in this scene? Yes. Mm. I would pay all the money I have to see Matt Powell's notes. Uh, He's just like an arrow from cause to God, Jesus. Then like six pages of drawings of boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. But so so now we, we're going to bring in a friend of his to, to run the numbers, this nine-year-old that shows up to do the math for us. Why do they get a child in for this? That is so <laughs> weird. No, neither of you put it in your notes. And I thought, am I imagining that this is an actual child here? <laughs> well, the, the real reason is very few people still believe this dumb shit when they grow up, especially somebody yeah. who's smart enough to do math. But this kid says, and I quote, the chances for us, this is, there is no context around this quote, right? We, we, we have not even met this person before. We just show up and he says, and I quote, the chances for a single protein, for a single protein, just one, is 10 to the 164th power. What the hell could that possibly mean? <laughs> That's, there, there would be so much more context needed before that again achieves the fucking status of sentence <laughs> <laughs> but 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 let's say that like let's say that we add enough information to make this make sense right like the chances of protein occurring naturally in x amount of time and y amount of spaces yeah. 10 to the 164th there's a lot of x and a lot of fucking y <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think of how many atoms there are on Earth, that's something like um, 130 to 10 to the 45, I think I found. Okay. How many milliseconds are there in 4.5 billion years? That's uh, <laughs> 1 times 10 to the 20. So you've got a lot of time for two things to try and come together into a thing. Right. Right, exactly. And they cut to him like uh, at his little church gathering thing with the seven people scattered about, like, don't all sit together. You look 
it looks bigger if you spread out. <laughs> so, and, and he asked him, he's like, who thinks that a 10 to 164th could happen by chance? That's the whole fucking word. N nobody raises their hands, even though by definition, it, it absolutely it happens one in every 10 to the 164th something, <laughs> right? So like, he, you're wrong, people without your hands up. <laughs> I also wonder how many of those people buy lotto tickets because <laughs> it's not zero. Mm. There's a non-zero amount of people with a lotto ticket in their wallet being like, the universe could exist one out of 10 to 100 and bit stupid. Yeah, there's a non-zero amount of people in that room who have a lotto ticket. And bear in mind, there's barely a non-zero number of people in that room. So that is quite a high percentage. <laughs> Well, look, OK, so it, again, and we have to point this out every time it comes up. The argument here is that proteins are too complex to exist without a creator. So there must have been an infinitely powerful being that can speak them into an existence that existed without a creator. Yeah, I, I, I did the math, by the way, on the odds of a God existing by chance. It was it was 10 to the 165th. Sorry, guys. Oh. We won by one Gotta order of magnitude. Now. <laughs> you just broken a 10 year old's heart, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> he just crumples up his crayon picture of him and God running through a meadow. Stupid atheist. Also. What the? F I, I I honestly, most of the time, I could at least tell what point Matt was trying to make. Here, I could not. Why does it matter that the moon is? What, how is the moon getting farther away? A refutation of evolution. <laughs> oh, I found this all very, very confusing. He was, he's <laughs> arguing that we need to give it more time to prove that we exist. I don't know. He was saying like the sun's going to get smaller in the future, and therefore we couldn't have previously evolved. Which is a bit like saying my coffee is going to go cold in the future. Therefore, it could never have been hot. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know what he's trying to say. It's so strange. Yeah, I literally could not puzzle out what he even thought that he was saying here. And, and bear in mind, like, this film was made during the pandemic, I think. And it was released into the world at roughly the same time as several COVID variants emerged. And given his views on evolution... I'd love to know what Powell thinks a virus <laughs> variant is. Yeah, they, right. they, This was December 2020. So this is round right about exactly the same time we got a few of those knocking about. Well, and, and if you think about it, according to Frog Accountant, it should only take 250 generations for all of its genetic material to be lost anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we should, yeah, the, the, the rate it's reproducing, this should have been over a long time ago. Yeah, within God, minutes. Jesus, you, you, you got to wonder if that Frog Accountant was advising Trump. <laughs> Cuts over to an interview with the COVID virus. Well, see, the thing that you got to understand about Francis Crick that he doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, and there is no other option. Yeah, no other option. <laughs> so... All right, so, and then we get a quote from uh, Second Peter that shows us how making fun of religion actually proves that his religion is right because it said we would in his book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a quote that decries scoffing in a film that has been 80% scoff. Yes, exactly. Like, scoff has been almost all they've done. <laughs> well, immediately after they say you shouldn't scoff, Raw shows up to talk about how we hate him so much because we're all such stupid poop for brain jerks. Right. Yeah. yeah. He, and he's yelling and ranting with the energy of somebody who's explaining how actually it's his ex wife's fault that he got that DUI after all. <laughs> That's the energy he's got going on. He's screaming, like, why are you so mad? Why are you so mad at us? And I'm like, dude, it's because you look like Skeletor's misleading Tinder picture. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then, of course, this is where Matt and Raw explain to us that you can't trust evolutionists because they change their mind every time they learn new stuff. But Christians have literally never learned a new thing. <laughs> so. And that's how you know we're right. Yep. Oh, and his whole rant here, it just goes on for so, so long. And it's like at one point he's saying, and you know that Rockefeller funded the education system. And I thought, wow, that came out of nowhere. And yet it was somehow inevitable. So I'm yeah, really right. impressed yeah, right. he yeah, managed exactly. to get there. I like his example of teachers here. He's like, teachers are like, oh, you can put whatever you want on a test. And I'm like, well, that's not a good teacher. And he's like, no, a good teacher would just ask you a question. And then you can just say whatever the fuck you want. And they're not there. And you're in a YouTube video and you sell a bunch of weird shit on your blog that no one visits and it's, that's the best teacher <laughs> okay so yeah so the argument that he actually makes here this is so bizarre is that in any subject other than evolution the teachers are like you write just whatever answer you want you get to look at any book you want decide what the answer is that's literally what he's saying it's like mm. not only have you never taken a test you've never been told what a test is <laughs> clearly 
Yeah, and then he talks about all the different subjects and how, like, you know, you get introduced to these subjects and they're true because, like, in maths, you're doing maths and so maths must be true. And then in English, he says, you know, it must be true because everyone's speaking English. But, well, I mean, that's not really what, uh, what an English class is at school. But also, like, <laughs> what, what language are they speaking in maths, Matt? <laughs> it's not just your English class they were speaking English in, mate. Today in English class, we'll be proving the existence of English and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, QED. Oh, damn it, that's Latin. Oh, we've got we, we straight off, off this curriculum. <laughs> I wrote in my notes like, math, the gateway drug to biology. <laughs> <laughs> Also, he's in the middle of his rant at one point and he goes, you know, it's just evolution, evolution. A baby evolves into an adult. Grass evolves into what? corn. And I'm what? like, no, what? no, buddy, <laughs> come on back. Come on <laughs> back. I, I don't even know how he'd think grass evolves into corn. Like, like I don't even know what he's thinking there. He, he seems to think babies evolve into adults. And I just wrote like, imagine thinking that this incoherent, deranged rant was a good way to end your movie. Because this is like Wait. near the climax of your movie. And you think, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave eight minutes of this in. This is gold. Yeah. He goes, we've made a generation of people ingrained into thinking one way. And I just wrote in my notes, okay, religion. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Okay. <laughs> well, and it, he's like, you know, he's like, they're so indoctrinated that when I point out that uh, evolution isn't true, they act like I'm on crack. And I'm like, dude, it nobody thinks you're on crack. It's clearly meth. Okay, it's <laughs> obviously <laughs> you couldn't really afford super strength to crack. Now I, I got to be honest. I was like hesitant to make fun of this guy too much because I think there's a brain surgery scar that's visible above his left ear there, and I did like so I don't know how much like I maybe he was a, a very different person before. I, I don't know, mm. but I did learn that want to punch somebody in their brain surgery scar is an emotional state during this movie. <laughs> I just, I didn't know that before. And I'm very disturbed to find out that that's in me somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Also, if we're going to like draw the line at making fun of people with brain damage, we're going to have to cut this whole fucking episode. No, I mean, we got, we got Matt Powell. We get copy McAsteroid. This is not going to go well. <laughs> Oh god! And I love at this point he goes for an analogy and he can't get there right, so he does the whole thing where he's like, "Our model is so good now that it's so good." Good. Yes. <laughs> their, their, their creationist model has never been seen before, and that model is intelligent design. That is just, yeah, just intelligent design. Yeah, it's nothing exactly. more. So even twenty years ago, our model wasn't as good as it is now because now it's on on YouTube where like anybody can find it. Whereas <laughs> before, we had to like shout it in the street and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and and since there's still like a, a solid four and a half minutes of runtime, they go ahead and squeeze in the purpose of life real quick. <laughs> <laughs> So he goes like, you know, if you ask atheists what the meaning of life is, they will not say supplicating myself before a vengeful space monarch with superpowers and a shit temper. Must suck for them, huh? <laughs> yeah, they just make up their own meaning of life. Luckily for me, I've got one that's given to me by a 2,000-year-old book that doesn't know about germs and <laughs> actually bears very little relevance on my life because the thing that takes place after it is infinite. Yeah. And and based on thought crimes. But those motherfuckers are like, kindness. <laughs> <laughs> Helping others, bunch of shit. And the thing is, he says, you know, atheists have to make their own life up. And that's just make believe because they're making their own purpose up. It's like pretending there's an invisible, omniscient being who has a special plan for you. That's make believe. That is almost definitionally make believe. Yeah. Right. Also, like the the, the nine year old cuts in here at one point. And he goes, you know, if, if atheism is so good, then why is it that the least religious places on earth are all so sad? Now, I just I only bring that up because that's exactly the opposite of the truth. Yep. Right? Of, of the 10 happiest countries on earth, five are also on the list of the 10 least religious. And the other five are like between 11 and 40 on the least religious. Like there is an absolute correlation between happiness and lack of religion. Now I, I the, the causality goes the other way, right? The, the idea is that the happier you are, the less you need religion. Right. Yeah. 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 But one way or the other, his fucking idea that not having religion makes you unhappy is absolutely disproven by the numbers. Yeah. And he seems to think that like, if you don't know God exists, you have no grasp of reality and therefore kill yourself. <laughs> You're just like, oh, I don't know. This, that's weird. That is such a weird, because he leaps to like, if you can't be sure something exists, it must be evil. And therefore you realize you are evil. And therefore you should kill yourself. Right. And I feel like he's like repeating an argument that he's only half remembered, which, you know. Yes. Fine. You're a child. But this is the climax of the movie. They left that in him, him trying to repeat an argument he can't quite remember. 
is left in as the climax. It's like they don't know that like the words before and after therefore are supposed to be related to each other. <laughs> it's so fucking weird because I think what happened is that this kid made this argument. Matt just is not bright enough to realize that he's just saying things that make no goddamn sense that, you know, because he's just like, if there's no God, how do I know this wall exists? How do I know this lamp exists? And so I must be evil. What the fight? Like, none of that follows. <laughs> to be fair, though, if you're using Matt Powell a Project, that's fucking sound as shit. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Matt Powell does not know that lamps exist unless God exists. <laughs> it's the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, right. So it's <laughs> all right, and then bedraggled though we are, we finally reach part six conclusion. Fuck you, you're not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> just yelling that at a monkey. <laughs> it's just a weird, intense guy yelling for a bit. Like, cool. Great, yep. great conclusion, guys. Well done. Yep, yep. They, they, he says, you know, those scientists, they don't have the evidence to back it up. It's like, that's what they always say about scientists. They don't bring the evidence the way that religion does. <laughs> Jesus. He talks about there not being intermediate fossils. Yeah, and I, I was so excited because I thought that bingo square was going to left unmarked and then suddenly <laughs> bam, right at the end, boom, yep, no traditional fossils, bingo. Jesus Christ. Okay, so obviously, very quickly, the whole idea of an intermediate fossil betrays a gross misunderstanding of what fucking evolution is. That being said, you could not ask for a more intermediate fossil than the goddamn Archaeopteryx, right? Yep. Hmm. Like, it's... Everything is intermediary to the next fucking thing. But that is so perfectly halfway between two species that just give me a fucking break. I can't believe they're still trotting out that old canard. Anyway, I also have to point out that I love that he keeps cutting to shots of Aaron Ra, not just mm. because of his obsession with him, but because Aaron Ra is always dressed as a problematic wizard in a Disney movie. Yes. <laughs> so it's always like some guy at a chalkboard, some guy at a cockboard. Go, my minions, take him down. <laughs> some guy at a chalkboard. Bill Nye the science guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love it because he, he, he does that while talking about how, uh, you know, this so what happens when I bring up my arguments to atheists, but then he's showing all the atheists who refuse to talk to him for this movie, who very yeah, clearly right, refuse right, to exactly. talk to him. <laughs> when I bring up, they, they block me on Twitter. But anyway, but if, when other people bring up similar <laughs> arguments... Yeah, and, and and by the way, so he's doing his whole, like, you know, he's doing his whole wrap-up of, like, you know, they say we're silly for believing, you know, X thing, and then but, we're, but they're the ones that believe Y thing, right? But in order to make this work, he has to use... Every time he says the thing that we believe, he has to add a bunch of extra adjectives like magical and, and, and poofs into existence. He has to describe everything in the silliest possible way. But like just to make it sound as silly as his stuff does when you explain it in the way that they explain it. Right. Again, what point do you think you have made? Mm -hmm. but for fuck's sake at one point there was a guy who's trying to explain you know the Christian trying to explain the worldview of scientists that includes the phrase and then the two slugs got married yeah <laughs> and does he think slugs need to be married to procreate? Is that is that what he thinks? Well, the, those slugs wouldn't have been having premarital sex, so we can only assume that they were married first. God, God wouldn't have created them if they were going to be all lascivious like that. Yes. And the thing is, at this point, I think he's as bored of this film as we are because this is like the last shot of the film and they try to cut to a cartoon but they cut like a second too early and just cut to a blank white screen and then cut back <laughs> to the pasta and then to the cartoon and they left that in like the fucked yes. edit they left that in. they mm -hmm. could have just gone back and, oh hang on we, we fucked up an edit there but no they left that in that's in there you can see that right near the end whoops and his his big conclusion before the credits and we do need to talk about the credits because oh, yes. they're my favourite part of the movie is him and the friendly neighbourhood atheist him being like so do you want to get some lunch later? And him being like, sure. There you go. Remember, someone said sure to me. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, and then after that's all over, he ends on the, the the voiceover of that one, the only person in his entire movie that spoke on behalf of science going, now I just want to remind you, I don't really know a lot about science. It's not something I have any expertise in whatsoever. And that's the end. <laughs> that's it. That's like he thought that was the big moment for him was the guy that he had brought on as a science expert saying, I'm not an expert in science. Yeah, it's like what you've done there is you failed to properly research your guests. When you when you done your guest booking, <laughs> you failed to properly research them. That's, yep. that's literally what you're admitting there. There you go. And then the credits start rolling and I got the fuck out. Oh, because I'd already Matt Powell for a while. But apparently I missed out. 
Yeah, I, I also got out. And then when I went back to look at the notes before recording, I saw Eli had more notes and I had to go back and watch Matt Powell rant over the credits. And I was so really? mad, so mad. <laughs> it's just, he very, I cannot believe anything but this. Matt Powell left his mic on while he was editing this and, it, and just included his <laughs> rancid mum. <laughs> you fucking yo, tell you. <laughs> fucking say that I should... Make a suicidal amoeba. You're a suicidal <laughs> amoeba. <laughs> Fucking, you don't know primate, primitive primates. <laughs> this is true. Look, li podcast listener, you've never had the experience of watching No Illusions deal with broken technology, but if it could be the narration for the end of a movie, that's how bad it is. And oh, there's a lovely line in it as well, where he said, "You know, they 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 want to debate this all the time, but would would they debate? You know, would anyone debate the existence of Santa Claus?" And it's like Matt, I spent an hour yesterday on the phone talking to a lady who thinks her magic book will give her teleportation powers. I will debate <laughs> yeah. the existence of, of Santa if you find me someone who believes in Santa. Yes. Absolutely. Clearly, you've never met Mars, dude. Come on. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, OK, so Matt has fulfilled his obligatory two videos for us to make fun of for the year of 2020. That will stave off a lawsuit from us for another year. But get cracking, asshole. 2021 is almost a third over now. And Marsh, thanks again for hanging out with us today. It was so nice to be able to introduce you to this little slice of Americana. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to see it. He will have a special place in my heart forever. Awesome. And well, that does it for our review of the atheist religion. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to cast a line out for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. When a scientist struggling to reconcile his beliefs programs a supercomputer to prove or disprove the existence of God and is stunned by the results, we'll be watching... The God Question. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, so with that to, <laughs> let's say, look forward to, we're going to bring episode 291 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for helping us out. Be sure to check the show notes for links on how to hear more from him. And perhaps an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us done by leaving us a five-star review anywhere they'll let you do that. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D &D Minus, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick and we will dress on Mars all of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission thanks again for giving us a check your life this week for Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick I'm no illusions promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week until then we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close Following this movie, Marsh's list of people to invite on to be reasonable got a lot longer <laughs> yes <laughs> Raw Matt went on to ask Matt Powell if he could borrow any tin foil and maybe a straw. <laughs> Matt Powell refuses to debate me just because I said we have to play Chubby Bunny first. <laughs> <laughs> Coward. What do you have against bunnies? The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.